Okay. So, Briggs, question. Yes. Okay, so, Ian, question. Yes, go ahead and get one. Let's take a quick look at this, guys. Schmidt, question. Can you read one of them? Yeah, absolutely. And I know that uh, Talon was hoping to read one too, but he is actually already at his next area. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. This is called, now, I want to touch on a couple things with this one. We're going to read it together, but you guys are going to have to go back and you're going to have to look at things that you've read. You're going to have to get really used to going back and rereading things, okay? I know some of you don't want to do that, but that's how you get the, your answers. And I know that some of you know this based on retaking quizzes in kids A to Z, right? Sometimes you have to go back and you have to look at it again to make sure that you have the right information. And that's what we're doing. It's called a close reading. I also posted a video for you guys a little while ago, probably about a month ago, on my YouTube channel about this. Went through one of these entire things and showed you guys how to do it. This one, now some of the ones we've been doing have been ask and answer questions where you guys write your own questions and then you answer them. This one is main idea. We're really focusing on the main idea for this one. Bricks. Yes. Yep. As long as you guys know what, what you're using for which one and you will maybe write them down, like I said to Tava, write them down then you can use different colors, that's fine. Schmidt. Yeah, go ahead and read paragraph A. Remember guys, the paragraphs are labeled on the side, A, B, C, D. Go ahead and read the title and paragraph A. Good. 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 So let's take a quick look at that first paragraph. Now, uh, they have you, and this is what I always say, go look at the next page. Look at the next page. This is what I want you guys to get into the habit of doing, and we'll come back and we'll read it. I want you to really quickly look at this next page. Make sure you understand the things that you are looking for as you go through and read. First it says, write one to three words that describe the main topic of the text. Then it says, write one sentence that tells the main idea of the text. Then it has you highlighting key details that support the main idea. You've got a couple of them to look for. Then you're also writing the topic of each of the following paragraphs. Now, if it helps you to go back and read these paragraphs as you go because want, you want to have one to three words that are the topic of each, following, each of the following paragraphs, then do that. You can come in, you can write one down, you can go back, you can write one down, do what's going to work best for you there. But I always recommend that you look at the questions, read them thoroughly first to make sure you know what you're being asked to do. You're also going to need pink, green, and red for the next page after that, or whatever colors you have. Just make sure you keep track, okay? Um, Jed, please go ahead and sit down. This is not what we're working on currently. Then you're going to look for words using context clues to figure out what they mean, okay? Then we're gonna look at the author's point of view, which we've also done in the past. We'll talk about opinions, and we're going to talk about whether or not your point of view is the same as the author's. Now let's go back in. Make sure you have a good understanding of what we're looking for. So we've read paragraph A. Now we're moving on to paragraph B. Abigail, are you looking to read paragraph B? Okay, please speak up and clearly. Please speak up and speak clearly. It's hard to hear you back there. Thank you. 
Good. So the other thing that I want you to get in the habit of doing now, they have you using specific colors to look for specific things. But if you are reading and you see things that you think are important or that you want to remember, highlight them, underline them. Do something with that information. For me, if I was reading this one, first of all, I noticed this is already underlined. I'd probably circle it or highlight it because you're going to need to come back to that. If it's underlined already, it means there's something that you're going to need to come back to. Now, that is the word you're going to have to define later, right? Now, here it says, a month after they put the germ on the surface, they put a piece of food on the counter surface. They picked up the food in five seconds. They found out, this is really important, right? They found out that the germ stuck to the food instantly. And then they ask you the question, does this mean that the five second rule does not work? And that's a good question, right? Let's move on. Paragraph C, Allie, are you looking to read that one? Okay. Say it again. Yes, go ahead and read paragraph C. Okay. Are you sure it's eight million? Eight thousand. Go ahead, go. 8,000 different types of germs, guys. I think that's important information. I would highlight it, underline it. That was only for one second. One second. Tava, question? Yes, you can. Let's go ahead and have you do that. Let me scroll a little. Please don't speak out, Madeline. Raise your hand if you have a question. Do you have a question? What's your question? So Madeline hasn't even finished reading. She's already made up her mind. She says, don't eat candy that falls on the ground. She might be right. Let's finish reading and find out. Or you might be one of those people who uh, doesn't mind taking a risk. Because a lot of people think if you can't see the germs, then eh, who cares? But you could be picking up 8,000 different germs, right? Some people don't want to take that risk. Well, let's keep reading. D, Teva. I think that one's really important, right? Yeah. So that means every single pair of shoes in this room, we've got some type of poop on the bottom of our shoes, whether you see it or not. Just think about it when you're outside. You could be stepping on dog poop, cat poop, squirrel poop, chicken poop, bird poop. Hopefully not human poop because, you know, but you never know. Guys, please don't speak out. And I hope your sister isn't pooping on the floor. I hope not. Question? Yes. Chloe, question? Yes, Bruno, go ahead and read E. And now they're asking you, what do you think? That's the question at the end. So I feel like this is what Madeline was saying. Better to be safe than sorry. Right? Maybe don't eat that piece of candy that fell on the ground. But they are asking your opinion, and your opinion might be different. Aiden, question? See? So, okay. There could be pee, there could be poop on your shoes. There are all sorts of things on the bottom of your feet. 
Who knows? On this carpet, you know how many feet have walked across this carpet? A lot. A lot. Madeline? Ian, turn around. Please stop talking. Say it again. See? Pig poop. Yep, there you go. Even if you think your shoes are clean, they probably still have pig poop on them. Sellers. Um, yeah, well, let's just hope, just hope that when you do step on it, you have your shoes on. <laughs> That's a good point too. <laughs> good, it's a good reason to wear shoes while you walk around outside, isn't it? I think it's a very good reason. Jack. Yeah, see? See? Madeline? Yep, there you go. Exactly. Brewer? Yeah, all sorts of poop, right? Teva? So, the reason that it is, and this is another good little science lesson. Yes, it is. So, chicken poop, cow poop, things like that. They are good, and the reason that that type of poop is really good as what we call fertilizer is because when it gets into the soil, it provides nutrients to the plants that grow. So the plants use some of that food, but what happens first is there are tiny little creatures, and some of them are a little bit bigger, bugs and things like that, that eat it too, and they break it down into nutrients into the soil. Then the plants use it, they use that and the power of the sun. Plants are called producers, and they use the power of the sun to grow. That's how they make their, their food. So yes, it is true, but just because poop is good in our dirt and good for plants and good for those little bugs and the microbes and the germs that eat poop in the dirt, um, they're called decomposers. So they break things apart into nutrients for everything else. If we were to eat poop, now we have, we, we have microbes and things in our, in our bodies too, but Unfortunately, the germs in poop are not good for us. They don't do the same thing for us that they do for plants. They make us very, very sick. So, you don't want to eat poop. Which is one reason why if you drop something on the ground and it picks up some of those germs, you could get sick. It's possible. It's possible. I see a lot of hands up. Andrew. You say it again? Uh-huh. In the toilet? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, see, you don't want to just pick up random chocolate that you find. I had a French teacher when I was in high school. She told us the same story. She was in her cupboards. She pulled out what she thought was a piece of chocolate. It was cat poop. <laughs> she ate cat poop. So don't eat things that are unwrapped that you find around your house. Just as a rule of thumb, okay, if you learn anything here. Learn that. Briggs. Guys, shh. Yes. Is that, say that for your sentence, your one sentence, is that what you're asking? You could say that, right? Is that what you guys think the main idea is? Is that what you think? Does everybody agree that that's the main idea? Do you remember the difference between main idea and topic? We're going to move on from the poop conversation, guys. I know everybody wants to share a poop story. Sellers, please don't yell or I won't call on you. Okay. I will call on people, but I do not want you guys yelling out or I will not call on you. Mallet. Does this have to do with poop? Okay. And 
dumb fell on the mouth. He picked her up, swallowed the robot, and started eating it and dead. And in the meantime, his brother grew the bigger stomach, and he got a full teeth. Well, there you go. I do not recommend, especially not gum, because that'll pick up more than just germs. There you go. Jack. Go ahead and do it. Sellers. Are dung beetles one of the things? Dung beetles are, are decomposers because they do eat. That's what they do. So they eat poop. That's what they live on. So they're called dung beetles. And then what they excrete, what comes through their bodies, helps create nutrients in the dirt, which helps plants grow. And then the plants feed uh, animals who, who are herbivores and eat plants. And then those animals get eaten by, um, by predators, by, uh, by uh, animals that are carnivores or, or uh, omnivores who eat those types of animals. And then it's a, it's a cycle. That's how we get food, food chains and the food cycle. Nick. That's exactly what Sellers was just talking about, the dung beetles. Yep, that's what they do. He's right. So he was going like this. Um, that's because they roll them into balls. They roll the dung into balls. And they are big beetles. They're much larger than, than a lot of beetles. That's exactly right. And that's food. Abigail. We are done talking about poop. You guys, you tricked me. Okay, we got to look at this. Yes, so back to Briggs's question. Remember the difference between a main idea and the topic. Main idea is, is, the, whole, is the, the larger idea that the author wants you to understand about the entire reading, right? Heston, question? You don't like the way of lunch at 12? Okay, guys, focus. If you focus right now, the time will go faster, okay? It will. Aiden, question. Uh, not about no more stories, no more YouTube stories either. Does it have anything to do with those? Not Does it have something to do with the work? Then it's going to have to wait. Brewer, go ahead and go. Ian, you need a pencil. I'll get you a pencil. Madeline, and yes, Hessen, you can go. Because it's in the story, they talked about how... Uh, there's poop on the bottom of her shoes. Yep, that's why it happened. Okay, this one does not have an eraser. Guys, let's focus. Okay. Main idea. So that's the over that's that's the larger idea of the story, right? That's what the the author wants you to understand. As soon as uh, as soon as he comes back, as soon as Heston comes back, you can go. So it's what the author wants you to understand about the piece. The topics. Those might be different from paragraph to paragraph, right? What the paragraphs are about. In this case, what, what uh, Briggs had mentioned right here, remember you want complete sentences, cite your evidence, restate. You're doing two things here. You are putting on your writing caps and you're getting ready to race. So caps, capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling, and race. Restate, answer, cite, and explain. And it says right here, right? Complete sentences, cite your evidence, restate the question. So you would say, the main idea of the text is. Now, Briggs, what did you say the main idea was? I said the main idea of the text is whether or not you should eat food off the floor. Perfect. The main idea of the text is whether or not you should eat food off the floor, right? Something like that. Something like that works, right? Do we all agree that that's what this was about? Whether or not you should eat food off the floor? Does the five second rule count? How quickly do germs get on your food, right? Get on whatever is on the floor. Nick, question. Are we gonna go over it? You mean when we're done? We can go over it, we're going over it right now. That's what we're going through right now, we're on the second page. Wilkins. So you think that they're saying don't eat candy off the floor? Is that what you think? Because 
They asked some questions in there, didn't they? They told you how many germs. They told you how many germs can get on your candy or your food on the floor, right? But I don't think they said don't eat candy off the floor, did they? Is that what they said? Zoe? We're going to go through all the pages. Yep, we will get there. Kylie? Yes. If you guys need to separate the pages and put the reading page next to the other ones, I would do that. That way you can look back at it a lot more easily than flipping back to it. Madeline? So Wilkins and Madeline think that the main idea is to not eat food off the ground. You could suggest that that's the author's point of view. I'm going to suggest that's the author's point of view, but I'm going to suggest the main idea is whether or not you should eat food off the ground. Because they ask questions in there. They say, what do you think? And they ask you, does it work? So for that one, you guys are going to come up with that. For this one, you're going to come up with one to three words that describe the main idea. One to three words could just be germs, five-second rule, candy, things like that, right? This one's a complete sentence, one complete sentence. These ones, you're coloring in details that support the main idea, that support the main idea, right? So let's go back really quickly up to the top. And because Talon's back, let's look at that first paragraph one more time. And let's see if we have any details we can pick out from the first and second paragraphs. Because I think we can. Uh, Talon, would you mind reading this first paragraph for us? Good. So looking at that, I underlined a few things um, because there are two important things there, right? The five second rule is the idea that if you drop food on the floor and you pick it up really quickly, that the germs won't stick. And then they're asking us, do we think it's true? And then they're saying, let's see what science has to say. So then they're going to bring us into whether or not science says it's true, right? And they gave us some pretty good evidence that germs are going to stick no matter how long food is on the ground. So I would highlight some of the information up at the top. For me, I think some of that's important in support of the topic, in support of the, excuse me, the main idea. I also think this is important. Germs can live on everything. I think that's really important. I also underlined earlier that they picked the food up in five, that when they put that germ on the surface of the counter and they put the food down, they picked it up in five seconds and they still found the germs stuck to the food instantly. I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good key detail, right? But they're still asking a question again. Does that mean that the five second rule does not work? They're asking you the question again. Then down here, the same thing, right? Uh, the Mythbusters guys put a piece of candy, they had let, let a candy, piece of candy drop on the floor for only one second. And it picked up 8,000 different types of germs. I'd say that's an important key detail, wouldn't you? That's important information. Then down here, we had a whole long conversation about this. Talon, you missed it. I'm sorry. But we talked about poop for a long time. So because in this paragraph it says it doesn't matter who you are, and now it says, on nearly everyone's shoes. Now, of course, if you have a brand new pair of shoes, you haven't walked on anywhere, you haven't walked anywhere with them, you haven't worn them, you're probably not going to have poop on those shoes yet. But we live out here, right? We live in the country. I live on a dirt road. I've got chickens. I definitely have chicken poop on every pair of my shoes. So, that's how it is. I guarantee everybody in this room has poop on their shoes. So, but again, away from the poop because we spent enough time on the poop, right? 
But the point is, I think that's pretty important information, right? Because we're talking about two things here. And they're related. Germs on the bottom of your feet are related to the five second rule in what way? Who wants to tell me how germs on your shoes would be related to the five second rule? Allie? Exactly. Because if your feet touch the ground, your shoes are on the ground, and you drop food on the ground, you might as well just put that food on the bottom of your shoe. That's what I think. That's what it sounds like to me. Would you eat food off the bottom of your shoe? No, no. I wouldn't. I'd love to. But, oh, you'd love to? All right, Madeline, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Talon. The germs, yeah, well, the germs might already even be on the food, right? Because the, even this one, they said they dropped a piece of candy on the, on the floor for only one second, and it picked up 8,000 different types of germs. So imagine if you dropped the food on the floor and then kicked it and then picked it up. I'm just saying. Sounds pretty bad to me. Aiden. No, monkeys do. They throw poop. Yes, we are not talking about poop anymore. Brewer. Guys, shh. Hey guys, why don't we hear talking? Brewer, please go on. Okay, if you remember, put your hand back up. Jack. Guys, why don't I hear talking? The next time I have to call somebody out on talking over somebody else will be a red dojo point, okay? Jack. He said that was only with solid food, but if you drop something that wasn't solid food, like applesauce, onto the ground and then tried to eat that off the ground, he said that was only with liquid food. Nah, it's with all foods. If you drop a hard piece of candy on the ground, just a hard piece of candy, still pick up germs. Of course, a soft food, because you can't pick it up as quickly, would probably pick up more germs. But it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to pick up germs, right? OK, back to focusing, though, guys. What? Let's go back to the next page. So I've underlined some key details. I want you guys to underline some key details. Then I want you to go back to paragraphs B, C, D, and E. And I want you to write one to three words. Now, notice that it says one to three. One to three words about the topic of each one of the paragraphs, B, C, D, and E. So if you just write one word, that's fine. Those don't have to be sentences. You're just writing words. They're helping you get your ideas together. The topics of each paragraph, remember, topics are different than the main idea. Um, yes, go ahead and go. Topics are different than the main idea. Each paragraph could have a different topic. And I'm going to say that they do, because if you go back up, and you look at those paragraphs, let's see, the topic of B, we have B, C, D, and E, right? B, what's the topic in B? Sellers, what's the topic of B? Okay, I'll get you another one. What's the topic of B, guys? Aiden? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You need to drink some water, and then let me know how you feel in a minute. Drink a lot more water, and I'll come around and check your temperature, okay? Wilkins. Yes. Nick. After Wilkins, yes. Sellers. Topic of B. You think that's the topic of B? Are you sure? Look at it again. What is that paragraph about? Just that paragraph. Don't read into it. Don't make an inference. Inference means coming up with an idea. Germs can live on everything. You could say that. That could be part of it, right? That's a key detail. But what's the topic? What are, they, what are they talking about? What specifically happens in that paragraph? What specifically happens? What do the scientists do in that paragraph? 
Ariana. They did. They put a piece of food, they put a germ on a countertop, right? On a kitchen counter. And then they put food on it to see what happens. So I'd say the topic of that sentence is the science experiment, right? It's the science experiment about what they did and how they found out that germs stuck to the food instantly, right? This paragraph, what's happening in this one, Heston? I have a question. What's your question? That's a really good question. Um, no, because disinfecting wipes, now disinfecting wipes aren't 100%, okay? But the, some of them get rid of as much as 99.9% .9 of germs. So most likely if you wipe your countertop down in your kitchen with, not with hand sanitizer. Exactly, same, same principle, but you don't want to use hand sanitizer your, on your countertop. You want to use something a little stronger. But if you use one of those disinfecting wipes or a cleaner, on your countertop in your kitchen, you don't put anything else down on it, and then you put your food down, you're safe. You're safe. Most likely, you are not going to pick up germs, right? Now, there are some exceptions, right? So let's say you clean your countertop, and then you put chicken down on it, raw chicken, and you cut it up, and you get it ready to cook, and then you don't wipe it off again, and then you put some bread down on there. Now you just exposed your bread to germs. Because... Raw chicken is actually just, just teeming with germs. You guys heard of salmonella? Yeah. Yeah. Raw chicken's one of the ways people get sick. So you always want to make sure that you clean up a surface after you've got, especially raw chicken, but any type of meats or anything on there. But yeah, that's a good question though. Melon. I say that one more time. Well, we, we do, we have a lot, of, we, we carry a lot of germs. That is true. We've got germs all over our bodies. And inside our bodies, bacteria, good and bad. Jed. Yep, we've got good germs inside our bodies. They're what help us do things like digest food. You've got bacteria inside your intestines that help digest food. So what happens is when you get bad bacteria in there, your body, your white blood cells and other good bacteria and things, try to fight those off and they can't. That's how you get sick, right? Gets inside your body and your body can't fight it off, the bad bacteria. Bacteria or viruses. So bacteria and viruses are two different things, but they can both make you sick, right? There are good, there is such a thing as good bacteria, but there isn't really such a thing as a good virus. Bacteria, so like let's say you get sick with something like strep throat, which is caused by a bacteria. Um, if you go to the doctor, your doctor can give you an antibiotic. Remember that prefix anti means against, right? Against or the opposite or something, right? Um, usually against. So an antibiotic means that it's killing bad bacteria. So you can take that and it kills your strep throat right? Kills the bacteria that made you have strep throat. But when you have something like a virus, like the coronavirus, for instance, it's a virus. You can't fight a virus with, a, with an antibiotic. It doesn't work because it's not a bacteria. It's a virus. So usually when you have a virus, same thing as like a cold or the flu, they all, they're all different types of viruses. There's nothing you can do. You just have to treat it. You can't get rid of it. Now, some of them you can vaccinate against. This is why you guys get all those shots, most of you, when you were, when you were young, is to try to vaccinate against some viruses. But bacteria, you can usually treat that with antibiotics. That's, that's essentially the idea you're trying to fight off the bad bacteria. In. That's a good question. So it also depends on what you cleaned the floor with. So did you use 
a brand new mop and disinfectant cleaner and you didn't walk on it, your food might not pick up germs or it might have less likelihood of picking up germs. But on a floor like this one, because it's carpet, if they come in and even use like a carpet cleaner, it's gonna be too hard to pick up all the germs, right? Plus, when you're cleaning along with a carpet cleaner, you're, you're still walking on the floor. So it's really hard to get floors entirely clean. But that is true, if you sat down on the floor and you cleaned the whole area and decided you're gonna eat off of it, might be, it's a little weird, but you could try it. You know, Ellie. <laughs> That's true too. And if you don't see the fur when you pick up the food and eat it, mm -hmm. um, you'll get germs from the animal. You can. And not only does animal fur have germs, it also carries something called dander, which is from the animal's skin. Dander. It's from the animal's skin. They're like dead skin cells and oils and things like that. So some people who are allergic to certain types of animals, like I'm allergic to dogs. So, and I have them anyway, so don't feel too bad for me. I just take allergy pills, but I'm allergic to their dander. So it's the, the, the skin cells and things like that that are coming off their bodies that make me have reactions, right? Oftentimes that's what people have with, with, uh, with cats and dogs is that type of uh, an allergy, an allergen. And that is a whole different type of situation going on inside your body where your body is trying to fight off different material coming in. Teva. And dandruff is, is a similar concept, right? Because dandruff is what is like when people have a lot of dry skin on their heads, dry skin that uh, is kind of dead skin cells that is kind of uh, accumulated and you get it like on your shoulders and so it's that white stuff that comes off. Very similar to what dander is on an, on an animal. Uh, Madeline? Go ahead and sharpen your pencil. Schmidt. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get them all, but you know, you could be really, you could be really clean. Jack? Some insects do carry a lot of germs. Flies, for instance, carry a ton of germs. Uh, cockroaches carry a lot of germs. Um, especially any type of animal that, uh, go ahead and go, that eats, um, that eats trash. The, de the decomposers, things like dung beetles will carry a lot of germs. Um, flies do because they, they're on everything. Flies eat poop. They're also uh, a, a decomposer, but they, they eat poop. So then what happens is the fly, it's kind of the same concept. Flies will bring whatever germs that they've just gotten off of all the animal poop outside. They bring it inside and they land on your food. And if you've ever seen a fly up close, really up close, um, they actually, they're sticking out their little, their, uh, their like tongues in the front and they leave little bits of saliva on your food. So not only do they have their dirty little, they're not feet, but they're like feet. And uh, their dirty little feet, they've got their mouths that are just full of bacteria. So yes, flies. What about spiders, that's a really good question. I don't know that spiders carry a whole lot because they tend to eat uh, uh, other insects rather than things like poop and and really germ cover things, but they could, they could carry it. I don't know. Wilkins. Yes, you can. Ariana. I'm making my way around. You need to calm down. Say it again, Ariana. Yeah, some people are. Some people are. Talon. Yep, that can happen. Sellers. Do cats have germs? 
Dander? Yes. Yes. Because I think I'm allergic to it, because the cat. Because once when we were when I was moving, I was had to sleep on the floor, and when I got um, really stuffy noses and stuff, then my cat slept by me. Could have been. You could and be, or it could be from something else off the floor too. Don't you get salmonella from it, like dealing with a lot of like chicken eggs and stuff? Like yes. That? So if you don't, okay. So like if you have uh, your own fresh eggs from your chickens, usually for me, I wash off the outside of the eggshell before I crack them open, only because sometimes the outside can have germs on it. Because they can come in contact with, with things that have germs on it too. First of all, they come out of a chicken's body, but but yeah, sometimes they get a little poop and stuff on them too, right? I'm sure Nick has also seen this. So <laughs> you know, Briggs. Yeah. And, um, she That's true. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, <laughs> that seems like a bad idea to me. I'm going to say it's a bad idea. Ian? Uh, two things. Two things. One, uh, the mosquito killing germs, and two, yes. sometimes when, when I crush eggs in order to make I should not hear. For my mom, so yes. Like the eggshells? Yeah, they can be pretty sharp. That's true. So um, that is a good question. Yes, mosquitoes can carry germs. Absolutely. In fact, they carry some pretty dangerous germs. Um, they can carry, I remember what I talked about with viruses and how viruses are harder to treat than, than uh, bacteria. They carry the West Nile virus. That one is very dangerous. They can carry uh, malaria. They can carry all sorts of different diseases. And the process, the thing with mosquitoes is they kind of do something similar. Uh, when I was talking about how flies will leave some of their saliva, well, when a mosquito bites you, I don't know if you guys know, but when a mosquito bites you and they're sucking your blood, they're not just sucking your blood. They're actually replacing it with some of their own saliva. So when you guys get those little bumps from a mosquito bite, some of you will just get a regular bump. They, they're always itchy though, right? They always itch. That's, the, that's that, that mosquito saliva inside there, but some people have allergic reactions to it too. Have you ever had a mosquito bite that got huge? Or have you ever seen somebody with it where it turns out to be like a gigantic thing? That's a little bit of an allergic reaction to, the, to that stuff, the saliva that's coming out of the mosquito's mouth. But yes, they do, they do. This does not mean that you all should go out and just be scared of all the flies and, and mosquitoes that you see, but you know, I wouldn't go and play with them. Go ahead and go. Okay, I see a lot of hands up. We have to move on, guys. We have to, Kylie, I know you've been waiting. Oh, see, it can happen. It can happen. Okay, guys, we have to move on, though. So, because we need, I want you guys to have enough time to answer some of these. So we've gone through that. Make sure that you go through and you find out. We went through the topics in those paragraphs, right? So we were looking at C. That was that Mythbuster show. That was their experiment, right? Um, Teva, if there is not a girl gone, you can go. D, there was a different experiment, right? That's the one about the poop on the shoes. Heston. Yes. And 
Bats can be very dangerous. It's absolutely true. And then you know what they do in that situation? You guys ever seen an EpiPen? So that's, it's epinephrine, which is the same thing as adrenaline. And, uh, and you, you'll get injected with it. Helps, um, helps with that allergic reaction, especially if you have trouble breathing. Guys, I know, I know you guys want to tell stories, but we've got to get more work done. Okay, and then the E, E. I would suggest that one is your best evidence right there that the argument for the author is that you should not eat candy or food that drops on the floor, right? And why do I say that? I say it because it says right here, the best rule is to always throw away any food or candy that drops on the floor. So when you scroll down, well, not for you guys, when you switch pages, and you go to the one that says, describe the author's point of view at the end, and they want you to use purple or whatever color you want. And it says color the sentences where the author shares their point of view. I'm telling you right now, I think that's in paragraph E. I think the author's point of view is in paragraph E. So I would, I would go back up and look at that. But remember, then they're asking you what your opinion is. And then they're asking you, is your opinion different than the author's? Okay. This one you guys have done before as well. You're writing your own questions and then you're highlighting where you can find them in the text. Mm -hmm.